Hello, everyone. Welcome to my crazy mess here on my desk. Welcome to Aloha Friday. It is totally Aloha Friday. Aloha Friday. Let me see if I can. Hi, Marilyn. I'm going to see if I can share this really quick. And maybe when Lynn comes in, she can share it. Hey, Marilyn. How are you, Mama? I'm going to clean up my desk. I'm going to work on my magazine journal. That is what I'm working on today. And God, it is so hot here. I have two beverages. That's how hot it is. It is incredibly hot here. It is ridiculously hot. And... Hey, Dawn, how are you? How's your new house, Mama? How's your new house? I saw your biking thing. I thought that was so great. How is your new place? So happy for you. So, so happy. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Joyce. Oh, my God. I can't even tell you. You guys, it, it, the weather here is like it usually is in August. And we have no air conditioning in our homes, you know? Same way we don't have any heat either. So I'm telling you, I have like, I've stolen the fan from one of my kids rooms and it's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. It is so hot here. I can't even tell you. I got some cool things I want to show you guys. I got today at, well, I got some of them at, um, you know, you guys, we have one of those friends of the Maui library, like, like Dawn has a friends of the library or had in California. Do you have that in Eugene too? You're taking a while to get used to it. Girl, I'm so happy for you. It's going to be so awesome. You're going to be like a couple months from now, it'll be like nothing, you know, I'll be like, woohoo. You guys, it's so hot that everything sweats. Like all the, my two, my two drinks, my electro, I had two electrolyte drinks. It's so hot here. Hey, Jamie. You need an attitude adjustment. <laughs> so you're going to try not to be mean to anyone? Oh, we do love you. You got a new central air. It's, you haven't found it yet? Dawn says she hasn't found it. Her friends about it. So we have one. And I used to volunteer all the time. And, you know, I had to stop volunteering, you guys, because I was, like, bringing home stuff. You know, like, at some point, when you have a real, live in a really small house, you got to just stop. You have to stop yourself, right? And so I'm just trying to clean up enough of a workspace. And let me see if I let me see if I can. Um I don't know how I can make it like not it's like at an angle so I can fix it. I don't know. Some days you don't know, oh, I hear you. You know what, Dawn, anytime you go through anything like that, you have to go through a grieving process. You know, a grieving process of, like, letting go of what you... Uh -huh. That's a really good topic for today. Okay, look, I have my two drinks, you guys. It's so ridiculous. Okay? Um, you have to allow yourself to go through the grieving process. Of, even though, like, we all say, okay, um, even if it's not a good situation, like, you're like, okay, I'm ready to, quit. I'm ready to be done with this job. I'm ready to be done with this job. Right? But you have to allow yourself to go through a grieving process of leaving it. And I don't think as women we allow ourselves. We think that we just need to, like, put our big girl panties on and just go. You know, we're like, I'm going to put my big girl britches on and I'm going to keep going. And, you know, you have to allow yourself to get adjusted to where you are, but also to grieve what you left. I mean, that's a huge thing. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I love living in Hawaii. But can I tell you, when we first moved here, I think I cried. I, I don't really tell this to anyone else, but I can tell you guys because you're my peeps and you're not going to tell me. You're not going to tell on me. I don't even know if my partner knew, but anyway, I cried every day because I left New York City. And you guys, I love New York City. And if you've ever lived in a big metropolitan city like that, you know, there's just so much. And it's beautiful here, okay? And I knew it was the right thing for my life and for what I was going through in my life. I'm sorry, I have to clean off my desk a little. 
I have been arting, but I have made such a huge freaking mess. It's like horrible. Anyway, um, I cried a lot. And there were days when I would second guess myself and I would be like, okay. And I knew it was, I knew that I was in the right place, but I would second guess myself. Hi, Sherry. I second guess myself and go like, did I make the biggest mistake in my life? And, you know, so first of all, let's face it. Weren't you originally from there, Dawn, or your family lives there in that area? That in itself holds a whole energy all onto itself, okay? I mean, all onto itself. Because when you move back home, even though it's not the same, it still dredges up. Or if you move close to your family, it still dredges up. Shizzle. It just does. I don't know why. Even if you're in like a totally... 100%, I'm in an absolutely fabulous place. It still dresses, dredges up shizzle. Right? And it's like, you know, it just does. So, you know, I told you guys that my sister and I went, I went my aunt passed away, and she called me. You guys, can I just tell you? Um, it, was, it was a beautiful thing, but I have not lived in that town since I was probably, I left home when I was 17. I graduated from high school early, and I, and I just left. Because, you guys, when you live in a one-horse town, you got to go. If, if you're not a one-horse person. Now, some of us are one-horse. Some people are one-horse people, and that's all fine. But I wasn't. Okay, i got to move my drinks. That's why I had to clean off my sides so I can move my beverages. So... So I went back, and, and I've been back a few times, okay? Let's, let's just say over the years, I had been back a few times. But I hadn't been back, like, so many times that I would, I don't know. Maybe it just never brought up my, sh it probably did, and I just forgot it. Because, let's face it, girls, if we can give birth and then forget all about the pain and then go back and do it again and again and again, you know that we can put ourselves in a place where we don't remember the bad stuff. You know, we just don't. You, we just don't remember the bad stuff. So, you know, my aunt calls me. You know, my mom, I told you guys, you guys have shared my journey. My mom's been gone for like almost 13 years. And this was my mother's sister, closest in age to her. She and my aunt were um, like a year apart. Okay. So, and my mom was the older sister. And this particular aunt, I'm going to be quite honest and frank with you. It's like a lot of drama. I'm sorry, I'm trying to plug in my laptop too. I didn't realize I didn't plug it in. You guys, my hottie just left for work. And can I tell you, he is like the Tasmanian devil when he leaves to go to work. Like, have you seen like the Roadrunner where the Tasmanian devil goes, you know, and just spins out? That's my hottie. He was like, he like thinks he has more time than he does. And then he stresses out right before he has to leave because he has to drive to the other side of the island. And sometimes, you guys, there's traffic. And he doesn't plan for it. So back to my ridiculous story. So my aunt calls me and she tells me that she's in hospice. And would I come? And of course I said yes. Of course I said yes. And um, you guys, I'd done that with my mom. I went through hospice with my mother. I went through it with my father. I went through it with my father-in-law. And this was in-home hospice. At least my mom was in, was in a hospice house. Anyway, to make a very long, ridiculous story short, I get there, and all of this stuff comes flooding back over me. Emotions, like, you guys, I haven't been there in... Okay, my mom did not live there. My mother lived in California, so she, when she passed, she lived in California. So when was the last time I was actually there? I was probably there, oh my gosh, 20 years ago? I mean, because I have no reason to go there. No, I had to be, it had to be sooner than that because my dad passed in like, so maybe 12, maybe 11 years ago I was there. I was there 11 years ago when my dad passed. He didn't live in that town, but I had to drive through there and I obviously stopped and stayed and saw my aunt and my cousin. You know, and you guys have to realize that, like, I'm a fifth generation from that little tiny town, okay? Fifth generation. Totally ridiculous. 
these emotions welled up in me when I was going back through this time as if I had been like, I don't know, like, like I had been broken up with, or I don't know, when you were in high school, that heart wrenching, just like, and it was like so weird. And I had to honor where I was and I had to honor, and then I had to go be with my aunt, right? And then the waves of emotions that would come up for me, being with a person transitioning is a whole other thing, but also to the, like the energy I carried, you know, like whatever it was that I carried. And so Dawn, girl, give yourself a break, pat yourself on the back, allow yourself to grieve and know that you, you're in the right place, doing the right thing. And, and this is the best part is if you're not in the right place, you'll know it soon enough and you can move on to wherever that is. And that's what I had to honor in my own self. So when I went back, I realized for myself that the energy of that place did not suit me. When I went back this time with my aunt, to be with my aunt. And I kind of stood outside myself, you know, like stood outside my life or looked in and looked at all the people. And I saw old friends that I loved, you guys. I mean, I was born and raised in that town, um, you know, old friends I loved, people I loved, you know, and I realized that it, that energy just did not, no longer suited me. And, you know, I didn't say anything to anyone because I don't, you know, it's like my, it's my, it was my journey. It was my, my junk I was going through, you know, but I was happy that I could go be there for her, but I realized, okay, for me, the energy didn't suit me. So give yourself a break. And you know what, Dawn? If you realize that the energy doesn't suit, you know that the universe is putting going to put you in the right place to do what you need to do. And that's what I've had to trust here, okay? Because can I tell you guys, Hawaii is a beautiful place to visit. It's a difficult place to live. Oh, I love you, Dawn. Don't worry. Girl, I love you. Do I have an eye stamp? No, Sherry, I don't have an eye stamp. I should get one. I have an eye stencil. But you know what? I think one of my kids borrowed the eye stencil and it's gone. I don't have an eye stamp. I should carve one. You're absolutely right. You're different now. And that's where I realized that my energetic pattern, my energy didn't match up. Like, okay, so I saw some of my old friends. And, you know, I loved seeing them. <clears throat> but you guys, like I had nothing to talk to them about. Nothing. You know, it's like, haven't you ever gone to a dinner party and it's so incredibly awkward you don't have anything to talk to anybody about? It was like that, except this wasn't a dinner party. <laughs> you know? You guys moving here, Maui brings up all your shit. I'm just going to say it out loud. All your SH, you know what? It brings it up. And you have to face yourself every day, and for a lot of people, they can't handle it. I mean, and, hey, there's some days I can't handle it. You guys, I tried to move off, and I keep getting dragged back here. Not, it's a beautiful place to visit. It's a great place. Like, when you come here on vacation, or if I ever get it together to do an art retreat, and you guys come here, you'll see. It's like so, it's like paradise. It's so beautiful. And you'll feel like you're in love. But my, my partner says it's like the Hotel California, you know that song? You can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. <laughs> Eva says she's going to. Yeah, Dawn, you know what? You have to let go of your old crap. You just have to realize that's not you anymore. I mean, it makes up who you are, right? Every experience we've ever had makes up who we are, but we're not that. It's just, it's, and Ho'oponopono, they just said, it's memory to playing. Eva says she's going to be moving to Texas at the end of July, and you're an ex-military wife, and you and used to move around a while, who was our very first duty station. I love going home to L.A., but I'm a gypsy soul now. Oh, I hear you, Eva. Well, I live on the island of Maui, so it's kind of like the country. It's kind of probably like the north shore of Oahu, where there's nothing hardly. Well, there's stuff now, but it didn't used to be. Oh, my gosh, okay. You have one? Ooh, I'm gonna, I can't wait to see it. I'm sure I'll have it. I should carve my... You guys... I actually have all the stamp carving stuff, and it's fun to carve your own stamps. I've done it with kids, and I've done it with styrofoam plates and all kinds of shizzle. But I, you guys, I haven't done it. Dawn, you know what? You also have to allow yourself to grieve and let go of that job, because that job is stressing you out, girl. That job is like being in a bad marriage. <laughs> and I don't know what kind of job you had, but I know how you were like, uh, you know? 
You need a little recovery time. What brought me to Hawaii? Oh my gosh, you guys really want to know. But we love you, Dawn. Your crafty peeps are all here. We're all here for you. Ready to work in our fatty patty when you are. Sherry says she wished she had a craft table. Girl, mine is a folding table. Don't even start. And this is my own makeshift thing. Perhaps I can afford to buy myself a thing, but I just haven't. This is my own. This is a recycled box, mailbox somebody sent me. And I've covered it with um, wax paper. Can you see the USPS stuff underneath it? And you know what? At one point in time when all my kids were here, I was, my crafting space was a little card table on the tiny space in the tiny corner of my room. But see, you have to... So, Dawn, so you just have to look at this. Okay, so you've just broken up with the most disastrous relationship. You've just ended a really bad marriage, your job. Your job is like your marriage because you are there a lot, a lot more sometimes than you are at home, right? And the difference is, you you know, this is what I used to tell people when I, because I've had some, you guys, I've had some stressful jobs in my life. This is what I used to tell my, my friends. I would say, you know, your job is like a bad marriage. The only difference is when you're in a marriage, you have sex. In a job, you're not having any. So there's no release. So you're just taking on all that bad energy, holding on to it, holding on to it, and then it builds up as resentment. I mean, do you know what I mean? For any of you, if that's a little too risque, just switch the channel. Just switch the channel. I said the S-E-X word. <laughs> it isn't, isn't it though? So you just got out of it. So you just had a divorce. So allow yourself to like grieve that divorce and you move to a new town. So now you're going to put on like your new, you're pretty soon you'll feel like going out. You put on your good clothes. You'll be like, oh, I, look, I look good. I'm going to go out. I'm going to find myself some new friends. Do you hear it? Do you know exactly? It's like that. How many of you guys have never had that? <laughs> and Joy's pocket man, right? How many of you stand up? How many of you guys know exactly what I mean? <laughs> I'm sorry, Eva. Are we, are we like being risque for everyone? Right. So Joni said she, when she left her job, she cried happy tears and she was never so happy to be away from somewhere. Girl, I know it. I know all about it. This is what I'm going to work in today. We can continue our conversation. I just want to show you because somebody's going to say, what are you, what are you working on? This is a magazine journal. I made it from an Oprah magazine. Guys, easiest thing ever. Make yourself one. So fun. And you know what the best part is? The pages aren't really big. So some of my art journals, the pages are super big. So this is like, I'm going to end up giving this to one of my kids. One of my, okay. So it's a stupid story. It's going to be like an art journal slash recipe book. So one of my daughters I have three daughters for you guys that don't know me. I have three daughters, ages, oldest one's like 27. Guys, it's terrible. She'll be 27. Is she 27 now? Or she'll be, she must have just turned 27. So one of them's 27, one of them is 21, and one of them's 12. So the 21 year old is getting ready. She just finished massage school and she's getting ready to. She's lived home and then moved out, and lived home, moved out. I mean, she's done a whole bunch of stuff and she works and she's getting ready to start that career and I think she's getting ready to get her own place and for all of you that don't know I love to cook and I'm a fairly decent cook you know um and she doesn't out of all my kids and all my kids even my 12 year old can cook um she's the only one that was never interested so she's get, I think she's getting ready to move into a place with, with her both friend and so She's getting ready to graduate, I mean, take the test, you know, to get her license. And so I'm going to make this as a gift for her. So I'm going to do art on all the pages, and they don't have to go together. And then I'm going to put a recipe or two recipes for things that she, so she can cook. So isn't that crazy? I'm sorry. A bad marriage, a bad marriage is hard. So it jobs even worse, right? It's like so ridiculous. You left Target after 15 years. Good for you. <laughs> I'm telling you, she's a really good masseuse. She is so good, you guys. I have to tell you. So I will advise you to make one of these for yourself. It's so fun. So what I did was I just covered the pages because I have all these book blocks. How many of you guys have, like, you like the cover of something, but you have the inside book blocks? So I covered the outside, and I just used glue stick, okay? I've covered it with book blocks, with book pages. Paint it over a little bit. I put masking tape over the spine because I know it's going to end up with an alligator mouth. And then I folded the pages. The pages are folded every other way so that, but not that you have to do that. 
you guys, I don't know. Somebody's already done this. Maybe if you, I get, but you if you te if you type in magazine journal, somebody you'll see somebody and they can give you a better four one one of how I did it. Then I just full I put some. She got a present for me or something or, or a present for herself in this paper. I put that on the inside so you could still see the Oprah magazine. And I folded this cover just a little larger than the pages because I wanted it to hang over. And I did the same thing on the back. All right, and some of them are still just. Uh, Oprah magazine pages. So all I did was fold them over. Let me see if I can find one that's not folded so you can see it. And I used a glue stick. Because you guys, glue stick works better. At least, okay, so see? So all I did was, this was the whole page, and I just folded it over onto itself. And did I do the other one? Did I do the other one? And I did the other one the same way. And I used glue stick and glued it down. And I didn't glue all of it down. I just glued like around here. Maybe put an X in it if you feel like it. Because you're going to cover it with other paper. Your, is your is is your daughter gonna come in? Is she she's moving to Eugene with you too, isn't she? Is it your daughter coming to Eugene, or am I wrong? Did I misunderstand? Santa Barbara is beautiful. California, though, can I tell you, California's not. I've lived in California. California's not the easiest place to live either. So. It doesn't have to be beautiful. This this art journal it doesn't necessarily have to be beautiful. And this I did these um, gesso transfers, which I tell you guys should all try. It. It's it, it takes a little patience, but she's coming in August. Oh, good. You'll feel better once she's there. So this one I tried a magazine transfer on, and it didn't come out so well. So I'm, I can gesso over it and try again. See, so you can make mistakes in this. All you lurkers say, hey, you can make some mistakes in this too. So I got some pages, but before I get to gluing in here, and I'm going to do it with a glue stick, okay? That's why I'm using a glue stick, and I, you know, I get these like gift cards or, you know, people give like, give my kids gift cards, and then they save them for me. Okay, so I'm, I want to show you guys the treasures that I got today from my friends at the Maui Library, and they were throwing them in the trash, Okay. They were throwing them in the trash, and guys, I just, I could have said, go for it, be in the trash, but I didn't. I couldn't take it. Okay, are you ready? I'm so excited. Look at these magazines. These are from 1977. Can you, this one's from 1977. Isn't that crazy? I'm so excited. I haven't even looked through it. I got all of these. I got all these old magazines. Somebody just dropped them all off. These are going to be so fun. Gosh, you guys remember this perfume, Jean 2? I don't even think they make it anymore, do they? All I can say to Joni and to Dawn, congratulations on divorce, on your on your divorce. <laughs> and you don't ever have to go back. Are you having a hard time, Joni? I mean, are you having a hard time, Jamie? I understand. Girl, some days I wake up and I'm like, what universe am I in? Am I the only one that does that? I wake up and I go, um, you know, what universe am I in? Look at this. He's wearing something that makes him different from every other man. Isn't this crazy? Oh, here we go. We were talking about it. Can this marriage be saved? <laughs> It's been a bad week. I'm sorry, Mama. So this is back when I guess, you know. So I have a whole batch of these. I have got a whole batch. They're all different, though. They have women's, um, and I think it was, how much was this? 95 cents in 1977. And then I have um, a woman's day from, what year was this? doesn't have a date. It says Women's Day ser Series of Series. don't know when the date is on here. There, it must be in here somewhere, though. It just says Women's Day Best, Christi Best Christmas Ideas number 18. So, oh my gosh, this, look at this. This is ridiculous, yeah? So I got all this, and then let's see what else I got. I got a red book.
Oh, burst into tears, girl. Just let it go. I got a, I got a red book. It was $1.25 from December, but it doesn't say the year. I'll have to, like, flip through and find out what year it was. So I got this one, and I got um, another one. This is from 1980. And then I got... Let's see, I got Treasures of the Holidays from, let's see what year this was, it was 95 cents, Red Book, and, hmm, maybe it's on the, oh, December 1977, so they almost have a thing on the side. So I guess I could, like, December 1980, so these are from the 70s and 80s. And then I got, this is from 1977, Kitchen and Bath Ideas. The ads are hilarious. I know, the cigarette ads. Aren't they crazy? You were 17. You were 17. 1977. How old was I? Okay. Let's see, 1977. I must have been 12. I was 12. Well, look, these are kitchen ideas from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. This is from 1977. And then I got a Better Homes and Gardens from 1979. 100 ideas under $100. 28 pages of our best projects ever. <laughs> um, and then I got McCall's Jiffy Tree Trims. These are all in the trash, you guys. This lady... These people brought all these magazines, and the lady, I happened to be there because I was actually dropping off some books, and she and I, she said, will you help me bring in all this stuff, because people just drop it in. Most of the time, people that volunteer there are older. This is December 1980, and this is December 1982. So whoever it was, like to say, look at the flowers. This is great. Let's see. Yeah, lots of lots of cigarette ads in here. Um oh my gosh, look at this. Look at that outfit. Oh my gosh. Advertising a telephone. Reach out and touch someone. Um, so she was like I brought in all this stuff, and she was like, oh, just throw those away. I was like, okay, right into my car. 1977, December 1977. No more grocery bills till 1983. You have a chance to win Campbell's Contest groceries for five years. Hey, Lynn. I know, flower power is right. Flower power is right. So this was my, this was my, uh, oh my God, look at that, the Brett girls. Oh, nice and easy. Smitty did it. Smitty, the, the perfume. Oh my God, remember this stupid commercial? If you want to capture someone's attention, whisper. How ridiculous. That looks like Renee Russo. I don't know if it is her, but it looks like her. <laughs> you were married for five years in 1977? Ah, well, good for you, Denise. Your mom had this one? Oh my gosh, boy, oh boy, RD. Anyway, that was my big, these were my big 1976. These were my big salvage from the thrift store and so that was my and I didn't did I get any books <laughs> I did I got okay so you guys I'm the queen of going through the stuff they're throwing you need a copy of Smitty did it okay I'll send you one Jamie um I am good at um finding things that people throw away that are going to be good so they also have this area in our Friends of the Maui Library, and I don't know if they had this for you, Dawn, but 
that is an area where you can just take, like, they put magazines and books, like, they kind of sweep through the store, and they put, like, have a free section. Most of the time, they're not books I want, but occasionally they'll be, like, I don't know, some, some cool things. So I grabbed these plays, and I don't know why I grabbed them. I just, something told me to take the plays. So I took the plays, and I learned, you guys, my lesson from when I... Did I tell you guys about when I tore up the, the $50 book? Like, I tore up this book. Like, my partner is a book collector. He, like, loves, he loves books. Any kind of books, he loves books. I also got these, but I got them because I think I'm going to use the front of the, the Cook's Illustrated because I like the front of it. So I pick up these three plays, and I, they're in the other room. So I, today, and I he came with me, and he, he loves to go look in the... Um, esoteric book book part so he went to the, he shops and does his things I got this dictionary too not that I need another one but I thought it might be good for this for this book um for this magazine journal so he he goes off and gets his thing and I pick up these plays and I pick up some, I get my magazines and I help the lady put out some books and I do some other stuff and we're just like chatting and talking. I'm talking to her and he goes, he finds some book that he wanted and anyway, he's also looking for some for our little one. I pick up this handful of plays, there are like three or four plays, you know, like from Samuel French, although I don't know if Samuel French was the one that did them all, but you know what I mean, like stage plays. And I take them with me in the car and I have my magazines and, you know, a couple of other little things and he says to me, how did you pick up those plays? I go, I don't know, but they were in the throwaway pile. You know, they, they leave it out there, and then if somebody, they leave it out there for a week, and then if somebody doesn't take them, then they just, honestly, they throw them away. So, I would love this with the dog, and it says flying. Um, I Googled it when I got, I mean, I Amazoned it when I got home, one of the plays is worth $800. So I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, not that I would sell them for $800, but, you know, that's how, that's how I used to make my crafting money when I didn't want to, like, spend money from my from my food budget or my, you know, household budget. Hi, Bunny. All right, let me see who everybody's here. And if I miss saying hi to you just because I was already on my rant, please say hi. Don't take offense. Okay, let's see. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Sharon, Eva, Joni, Dawn, Lynn. Let's see. Hi, Sandra, Jamie, Sherry. Let me see. Hi, Zara. Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Everybody say hi to Zara. Um, Marilyn. And I'm sure I miss some of you too. And all you lurkers in the back, say hey. So I am, you guys, I am going to do, and maybe you'll do this too with me, Dawn, if you feel like it. Hey, and Denise, and hey, Denise, and Carolyn, hi. Um, everybody saying hi to you, Zara. Welcome, welcome. We're happy you're here. So I'm thinking of having. A, I just passed 7,000 subscribers, which can I tell you is so huge for me. I was so happy when I had 100. Okay, so I passed 7,000 subscribers, and I am thinking of doing a 7,000 subscriber video hop. And if you don't know what that means, that means that we'll pick a theme and we'll you know, everybody will make a project around that thing. It can be a project of your choice. And then we'll do a video hop. So if you, I know, right? I felt like it was great. I was like so shocked. I didn't even know it. One of my kids said, did you know you have 7,000 subscribers? I said, no, I didn't. So I'm thinking of doing that and it will be later on in the summer. So I'll give you guys some details about it. <laughs> You're welcome. And anybody else? Hey, Carolyn, how are you? And Cherie. Hey, Cherie. 
and anybody else we missed, we send you love. Hey, Sandra, we send you love. We're not trying to not say hi to you. This is this like really good. I've never even, I've seen these, but I've never bought one. They're $6 for a Cook's Illustrated. Maybe I should read them before I tear them up, right? What year are they? Look how pretty the, the images are, though. I wonder if I could Xerox that image and put it into the journal, you know, like copy it and then put them all over the journal. Maybe. Look at the back of this one. This one's cheese. Oh, they're so nice. All right. I'm going to get to working in my journal. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about doing a 7,000... A 7,000 subscriber video hop. So what you do is you'd make a video and then of a certain, like, say we, be, I don't know, say we would just do like blue books or I, I'm just, I don't know, something silly. And then on, on a certain date, everybody, we would all have a list and then people would watch, go from person to person and watch your video hop. See, I started doing, I did a paper, uh, the gesso transfer, and it came out fairly good, except that there are bubbles in the magazine, so anywhere that it doesn't, the image doesn't lie flat, it doesn't, it comes up. Oh, well, we're happy you're live with us. So... What's cool about a video hop is like, we each have people that watch us or, or our peeps, right? But they don't necessarily know all of you. So it's cool because it just people start, they subscribe to your channel or they find out about you or it's cool. All right, so I've done some book pages. So basically this particular magazine, now not all the magazines because I do paint on magazine pages. But this Oprah magazine, painting on the pages themselves, I guess you could use them as painting papers. I have. But painting on them directly as an art journal, they get very warpy. Which is fine for me, but she may not like it. I'll show you how to adjust that transfer. I'll do one in here in a minute. So, I've what I've done is, like, this one has a book page on top and a little piece of a dictionary page. And this whole side I have to still do something to. These have book pages and all kinds of stuff on it. And, you know, I'm not finished with it yet. These have two magazine pages. And this has... The top was a magazine page, and then I gessoed over it and put this transfer on top. And the bottom was, I think, some... I think the bottom was painting papers. I don't know. Oh, girl, what? we'll totally do it. I'll, I'll definitely message you, and we'll do it. Hi, Crafts from the Dungeon. You made my paper junk mail flowers? Because I used to be so obsessed with those. One year, I gave those as gifts. I made paper trails. <laughs> I made, like, um, what do you call it? Paper, paper garland. You don't have a YouTube channel, Bunny? Why not? Can you imagine getting some, like, ridiculous paper flowers for me? So ridiculous. So this one I was painting, I was gluing paper down, I was just, because I realized when I painted on this one that it made it so warpy that I needed to go ahead and so I just put some pages down. And they're reader, these are from Old Reader's Digest, which are really honestly not good for anything except for that. And this is like half of a magazine page and a piece of painted paper. Just realize they're all going to have like a, a, a uh, they're going to have a recipe on them. So the recipe on it, I think it'll make it better. Oh gosh, you guys, I love this. Look at this one size says flimsy, fleeing, and a flea, and the other one is flying and fly. These are great images. And fool, I love that. Maybe I can do half that. Maybe I can fold it in half and so I want the illustrations. Oh, uh, you want to write your recipes and make one for him? Ooh, do it for your son, Joyce. Do it. Well, you know what I thought for this one? And I know it's going to sound silly, but, you know, I thought <coughs> I thought I could <coughs> have made her like a super fancy journal. And I don't think she would ever use it. 
as much. I mean, she does, she is a journaler and she does use the journals I make her, but for a cookbook, but I also wanted to like give her the idea that, you know, some of my kids, they laugh about my trash art, but so I just wanted it to be like something fun and not something so, um, you know what I mean? So, so serious. So then maybe she'll write in it. Maybe she'll do some fun things in it too. You know what I mean? That, that's what I thought. Oh, the other thing I got is this. How many of you guys, you probably already have it and I'm just late to the party. How many of you guys got one of these? You don't, you don't know how to do YouTube? Oh, figure it out. It's so fun. Joyce, do you have any videos up on your channel? So I got this. You guys, I may be late to the party. One of my one of my dearest crafty friends and I were talking and we were talking about something and I was telling her that my and they don't hardly ever come here these slow books and if I order them online, the shipping to here is ridiculous. So she said, "Well, let me see if they have one at my Barnes and Noble," and she went and they did. Right? These are so great. They're pricey, but you know what? I figure, oh, look at this with the cups. I love that. I figure, ah, oh, whatever. So I'm excited. I don't know what I'm actually going to do with it. So, hey, Barb. Barb, look who came in the mail. Hey, Miss Barb Owen. If you guys haven't been over to her channel, go on over and check out how to get creative.com, Barb Owen's channel here on um, YouTube, and you will love it. Love it, love it. I'm so excited. So I, it just came in the mail right before I started my stream. And I haven't looked through it yet, but I'm excited. And I'm, you know, and I think these, these types of magazines inspire me. It arrived in perfect shape. Are you kidding? It arrived in perfect shape. Do you guys ever order stuff online and then forget that you ordered it and it comes and you're like, where did, when did, where did this come from? Or like you order it at the moment and then it takes a really long time to get to you. So I'm excited. I'm going to, I'm definitely going to have fun looking through it. Ooh, this is a whole origami section. I'm going to have fun looking through this and working on some of this stuff. I think these ladies that created this are so creative. Like, look at this. This is so creative. Like a Facebook. Look, it's like half of a face. Oh, you guys, we should make those. We should totally, we should totally copy that and make it for ourselves, you know, out of like our own face drawings or our own magazine pages. Love, love, love it. And you guys, I don't buy scrapbooking paper anymore. Does anybody, any of you, are you off of scrapbooking paper? Oh my gosh, this thing has so much in it. It has like a dog paper doll. Oh my gosh, and it's got joints. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to use it. I'm so excited. You know, to me, I think this is like, this is fun. This is fun. We're happy to see you, Miss Barb. You hope you make Drama Free Friday. Bye, Bunny. Big hugs to you. Hope you have a good night. Well, Drama Free Friday will be, it's the first Friday of every month. You just bought cardstock? Oh, good for you. Safe travels, Bunny. We love you. Joni says she has so much graphic paper that she hasn't bought any in over two years and you refuse to buy more. I hear you. I hear you. Good for you, Crafts from, from the Dungeon. You just recycle? That's awesome. You're a girl one up on us, that's for sure. How many of you guys are, are friends with our Roy Booty Sweethearts? How many of you guys are friends with him on Facebook or have gone over to see his craft channel? He's a he's a fabulous, fabulous artist. He does fun things. He sews, he knits, he he made purses. They were awesome. Did anybody see the purses that he made? 
They were so cool. Super, super, super cool. So how many of you guys are friends with him? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get my collage fodder together. Loved this magazine page. I don't know where it came from, but I loved it because it was so loud. Um, Barb, Barb was my, Barb got it for me. Our Barb Owen got it for me. We were just chatting the other day and I was saying I wanted one and I went to my, you guys, the thing is, is if they get them here, they sell out in like a second. So then that means that if you wanted one, you never got to have it, right? I love this. I'm going to put it in here somewhere. I just got to figure out which section. Maybe I'll put it on this section. So Barb got it for me. She got me the But I called our Barnes & Noble and they were like, no, see, the thing is with things like that here, if it doesn't sell, they just don't, I mean, if it doesn't, you know what I mean? They just don't get it. So you just got to go with it. What if I do, maybe I can do a magazine. Hmm, thinking, thinking, thinking. Maybe I can do, that would be cool. I'm going to save this and do a magazine transfer with it. But I need, I need some good book pages for it. It is an awesome gift from an awesome gal. They only had two copies of it where you are. We get zero copies, okay? Zero, you guys, zero. I don't, you know, I don't understand how things actually work here as far as stuff like that goes. Because, hey, if you go to our Home Depot, guess what? You get, like, the most ridiculous seasonal stuff that will never go here. Does anybody else know what I mean? It's like, we live in the tropics, and they'll put, like, some some seasonal, whatever, like winter stuff. She was awesome. Yeah, but you did all the legwork, Barb. I couldn't even order one because I went on barnesandnoble.com and I tried to order one. I couldn't even order one. I could order other things by that art, by the lady that makes it, but I could not order a, I couldn't order a flow book. I tried because I wanted one. I couldn't get one. They they don't even have it. They don't even have it. You guys, okay, so I love this. This is one of my favorite painting tools. And Hottie Popo got it for me. She and Beck gave it to me last year or the year before, and it's great. It's, look, it's double-ended, and I use it to paint with. If you guys can find one of these at your dollar store, get one. This one says Betty Crocker, and can you see it has, like, a spatula on both ends? But it's awesome to paint with. So, anyway. From the dollar store. From the dollar store. I don't know which one, though. I don't know if it was Dollar General. I don't know if it was Dollar Tree. I don't know if it was... I don't know which one it was. I'm just going to glue some backgrounds down. Whatever I have here, because I don't have a lot made. Hi, Laura. How are you? I live in Hawaii, Carolyn. Are you asking what state Barb lives in? Or are you asking what state I live in? I live in Hawaii. I live on, you know what? They may have them on Oahu, but I don't go to that island. You know, I mean, unless, the only time I ever go is unless I have to go to the doctor because that's where they have like a lot of specialists or whatever. Like when I would take my daughter to Shriners for her, um, for her scoliosis. But I didn't, honestly, by the time you, take a trip there, the last thing you're thinking about is, hey, let me just go all around and look for a Barnes & Noble. <laughs> a Dollar Tree? What did you say, Angela? I missed it. Anyway, back to Roy. You can go over and check his channel out. His name is Bootsy Sweetheart here on YouTube. And just show him some love. You know, he is just so sweet, and he's so supportive of all of us. Like, he, I'm sure if he's not here tonight, he'll be, you know, he, he shows up a lot, you know. He's a really great guy. So. So you guys stay tuned. At the end of July, 
I am taking part in another one of those um, another one of those collaborations, but this one's called a gadget collaboration, okay? And I'm just as curious as you are to see how it's going to come out. The gadget collaboration. I am just as curious. Um, his name is Boots. It's the channel is Bootsy. B, I think it's or all of them. Hey, Lynn, can you find it and put it into the search bar? Let me see. Let me see if I can find it. The gadget collab collaboration. I have to tell you, for me, somebody sent me. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's B-O-O, -O. here, let me see if I can, hold on, let me see if I can just put them in our thing. Let me see, how do I share it? <laughs> how many of you guys are doing good with this new YouTube thing? I have to tell you guys, I'm not. I am not. I have not mastered it. I probably just need to sit down and figure it out and... But I'm not, I'm not, um, here, let's see if I can just share this. I'm not up with this new YouTube thing. Here, let's see. Thanks, Laura. Here, hold on, let's see. I think that, I think you might be able to get him from there. Try it and see if it takes you to him. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm not up on all that, so... I'm not up on the, are any of you using the new Creator Studio? Are you using it, Dawn? Are you using it, um, are you using it, Barb? I, I don't know. I think I need a new computer, honestly, because it's just not, it's not doing great for me. He's so sweet. He's, and he's a really good crafter. He is a very, he's an excellent crafter, and he's such a sweet guy, such a love, such so supportive. I said some people being kind of rude and mean to him lately on YouTube, and I just was like, that's just so nonsensical. I don't know why people go out of their way to be mean to other people. It just makes no sense to me. Maybe one of you guys want to explain it to me, because it, it makes absolutely no sense to me. I have too many things going on in my life to be, like, mean to other people. It's like, change the channel, you know? You're still dealing with the old version? Oh, I, the new version. Hey, Penny. Um, the old version, I try to go back to it, but sometimes it pits the other one as my default. Oh, my God. I tried to... Okay, this is the other thing. Okay, this is how silly I am, you guys. The new version doesn't even show you where to upload a video. Okay, okay. it took me like, I don't know. It took me, it, it took me like, I don't know, a few minutes to figure out. You know how the old version, it just had like an arrow right there and you could just like upload your video? Well, the new version, it's not like that. I was like, okay, well, we can see how this is going to work out for me. <laughs> Hi, Malia. How are you, Mama? I was like, okay, if I can't figure out how to upload a video, that is ridiculous. I was like, so ridiculous. I was like, all right. <laughs> This is not going to work well for me. Not being able to upload a video, not going to work well. 
Now, you guys, I know none of this has to do anything with recipes, but what I'm going to do is, as I said, I'm going to lay some backgrounds down and then maybe art on them a little bit more and then make a recipe, put a recipe on it. <laughs> what if you're not happy? It makes her lousy life seem better. I don't know. I, you know what? I just, I'm like over it. You guys, I have so much ridiculousness going on in my own personal life. But I can't even begin to embrace anyone else's ridiculousness. Does that make sense? Like, I, I honestly can't, like, embrace their, like, meanness or anything like that. I just can't. Like, somebody called me up and said, I want to tell you, like, you want to hear some, like, sort of, like, bad news? And I go, no, I don't. I said, but thank you for calling me. I said, I'd love to hear some good news. <laughs> I'd love to hear some positive news. <laughs> Barb says, I've, embla I've embraced the block button. So, so good. So tell me what's on your crafty tables, girls. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me what is on your crafty tables. I need some tape, and I think I took the tape in the other room. Just like my life. Because I'm working in this space, and then I still have my tiny space in the bedroom. And then I took my stuff to art in the park. How many of you guys like to, like, try to art outside? Well, I always think it's a good idea. At the time, I think it's a good idea. And then when I try to go do it, sometimes my stuff blows away. Anybody, any of you have that issue? I've had that. I was just looking to see if I had, because I know I had some painty papers over here. I just, or I thought I did. Maybe they're only in my head. Maybe that was like some other thing that I was working on. So I have been, so I tried to art in the park and that was kind of not as successful as I had hoped. My youngest daughter, she's getting ready to go see her dad, and so she and I are trying to spend front time with her friends, and, you know, I was, oh, Donna, I hear you, Mama, I so hear you. You're crocheting flowers at the moment? Oh, good for you. You're stitching a baby sampler. Oh, that's so sweet. You're making a man prayer a man a man's prayer journal. Oh, very nice, Don. You just have to like let it out, girl. Just like be where you are and don't worry, girl. I'm telling you, I went through my own shit like that. Joyce says she's so into cardboard and brown paper bags. Woohoo! Malia says she writes outside, but she can't art in public. Girl, I get it. It's not about the arting in public. So for me, it was just like, okay, I'm gonna take the kids to the park. And then in my head, I thought, well, if I take the kids to the park, then I'm going to be able to, like, hang out and do some of my own things. And it didn't work out like that. The wind started blowing, and so I didn't get anything done like I wanted, but that's okay. I got to hang out with my kid, and that was good. So, you know, she's at that, she's, you know, she's 12, you know, and, like, she was seeing... So where we live is very sort of, it's going to sound terrible, but it's a little transient. It's like, it either embraces you or throws you off. It's just kind of the, the energy here. And so some of my daughter's friends, they're, you know, they're moving off. Their parents are moving off. And so she wanted to see them all. Oh, that sounds so fun. Dawn says she's looking for an art, art classes there and to meet people and have a, at a community center. Oh, Dawn, that sounds awesome. Hey, Don, you know the other thing? Check check the college. Because, you know, a lot of them have not-for-credit classes. And they'll be like art or sewing or whatever, something. Like one time, I took a quilting class. And you guys, I knew how to sew. But I took a quilting class. And I met some of the coolest people in this quilting class. And then one time I took a, I don't know, it was like Chinese cooking class or something. It was something that I was like, oh, that'll be fun. And I met the best people. And... You know, so I agree. It's like definitely like one of those things. 
So anyway, my poor little girl, she's like, her friends are just moving off. And, you know, I understand. You guys, it's very expensive to live here. And so sometimes what happens is people move here and they have, like, a great place to live. And then, you know, they're renting it. And then with Airbnb, I have to tell you, a lot of, a lot of people are vouching or, like, letting long, not long-term rental, renting and doing Airbnb. And what's going to happen? And we're seeing it already. My partner, he was, like, he was like talking about it a couple of years ago. We're seeing there's just like, there's lots of jobs, but there's no places to live that you can afford. So, I mean, it's really impacting our, our community. So that's what, that's when I took her to the park. You found a jelly plate class? <gasps> oh my gosh, Dawn, that would be so fun. Now write a jelly plate class. I want to take a class from this lady. You guys have to look her up. Her name is Crystal Neubauer, and I think you spell her name, and I'm not 1,000% sure. And I don't know if she has a YouTube channel, but I know she has a website. And I don't know how I found her, you guys. You know how, like, how you find people and you don't even know how or whatever? I don't think she has a YouTube channel. I've never seen her on YouTube. But I think you spell her last name N-E-U. It's either N-E-U-B-A-U-E-R or B-E-U-E-R. And her first name is Crystal, and she's a collage artist. And she also does, like, this class called Make Your Marking Tools. Well, I've made marking tools. We all make marking tools out of whatever we have, right? And then she does some other things, like, I don't know, like, you'd have to check her out. But I wanted to take a class with her. If you guys ever get to take a class with her, do it. Dawn's saying she wants to take Barb's classes soon. I'm going to sign up for Barb's thing. Okay, so let me tell you. I don't know the 411, but maybe Barb can tell us 411. Barb has a site called howtogetcreative.com and it's a monthly art membership and she does like classes and there's all kinds of things on there. What's cool is you can try it out for a month for $1, for $1. So you can try it out to see if it's for you, right? So I am going to do it. I'm, as soon as my, when my lovely little girl leaves, I'm going to do it. So Eva says she's going to do it too. Your sister has a timeshare in Maui. Are you coming with her, Eva? She's coming for the 4th of July. Okay, so Barb's telling me that's correct. So you guys should go over there. Just see Barb's, see Barb's name right there. Go to the right. There's three dots. Click on it. Go over to her YouTube channel. If you look in the description box, It'll tell you how to get to, or you can just go to howtogetcreative.com and sign up for a month for a dollar. I'm doing it. And then whatever project I make, I will come back and show you the project that I made. Because I haven't been taking many classes or anything, and I'll tell you why. Because I told you guys that like, I had my daughter in private school. Well, at one point in time, my hottie and I had three kids in college and one in private school. Okay. Do you guys, do you know how much extra that leaves you? Almost none. Three kids in college. It's so ridiculous. You're waiting until you get more settled on. I hear you, Mama. But I haven't had, like, I, look, you know, it's like when you have that many kids in college and that many expenses going out, you're kind of like, you're kind of like, do I really need this? Like, you kind of think to yourself, do I, is this a necessity? I love Barbara's mandalas too. I have her mandalas, her mandala deck and it's awesome. In fact, I have a journal that I started using them, her mandala deck. I should bring that out when I get myself a little bit better. Every time we all see mandalas, we think it'd be Barb. So that's why I haven't done. So I wanted to take that Crystal Neubauer class. Um, and the only reason why I bring her up is I don't think she's going to be teaching anymore. So if she resonates with you, and if she's in, she may be teaching in a city near you. I don't think she's going to teach anymore. I think this is her last year to teach. So that's the only reason I brought it up. You have the deck too. I love it. I made a journal with it, and it, it was coming out really good. 
I don't know, you guys. I was going through so much. If I, if I told you guys half the shizzle I go through, you'd be like, serious? I mean, I only tell you guys the most funniest, ridiculous stuff. And maybe, I don't think I tell you any of the sad stuff. I mean, I told you about my aunt passing, but you know what? She was old. And, you know, it was beautiful. We're happy that we think of you, Barb, whenever we see it. A, a mandala. I call it a mandala. Barb calls it a mandala. So I don't think, I don't know if there's any right way or wrong way to call it. So, anyway, I got some stellar happy mail this week, but you know what? I'm reticent to show you guys. I, I, I'll bring it. I want to do a project because I never want anyone to feel like they have to send me anything. Okay. But, you know, so I'm reticent to show you happy mail. I mean, I showed you my flow book because, you guys, I really wanted that flow book. But I'm reticent to show happy mail because then sometimes I think people feel like they have to send me something and that's not ever, 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 ever the thing with me. I do get some, some exciting happy mail this week and maybe I'll show it to you guys next week. I have to, it's in the other room. What? You can call it whatever feels right in your mouth. Ha <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, have a wonderful lunchtime crafts. Where do you live if it's noon? Where do you live, Mama? Because it is 4 p.m. here in Maui, so it would make it 10 p.m. on the East Coast, 7 p.m. on the West Coast, and somewhere in between. Well, we're happy you joined us. Australia! I've been to Australia. I love Australia. You know what I bought uh, before you leave? Crafts from the dungeon. You know what I bought when I was in Australia? I found whatever little craft shop that I could of local artisans and bought their work. And then you know what I did? I took, guys don't ask me why I did this. It was like, it's so weird, but it's like I wanted to do it so bad. So I went into this museum and on, in, in, um, I don't know if it was in Perth or if I can't remember now, it's been so long ago. I don't remember if it was in Perth or if I, I went to Perth, it was in Brisbane, I was in um, Sydney, but I don't remember where the museum is. Anyway, they had these beautiful fishing nets and they were above my head and I have to tell you, I was so taken back with them. It was like, unlike anything I'd ever experienced, I actually had like spiritual experience with fishing nets. They were so gorgeous. And then wherever I was, I was staying with some friends and um, I mean, I traveled all over, but I stayed with some friends and I asked one of them, I said, so I must have taken the class in Perth because that's where I asked one of my friends. I said, where can I, I want to, I want to take, take a class. Not that I was ever going to make fishing nets, but you guys, at the time I was, you know, I've always done some sort of art. And at the time I was doing metal textiles and stuff like that. And, um, so I took a weaving class, like how to make, actually like how to make fishing nets from a, a, a deaf aboriginal woman she and she was really old and it was probably the most it was such a wonderful experience that i was like i felt like i had been given like a gift it was so crazy not that i'm never going to make a fishing net because i'm never going to make a fishing net but i did after that use that weaving technique in my artwork you're into you're into mandalas too so that was my that was my my Australia art thing. And I was with, I was traveling with a girlfriend who's not into any of that. So she basically, she thought it was crazy to try and hunt down somebody to teach me how to make, um, traditional nets. And what I learned from the Aboriginal woman, it was deaf. She spoke though. I mean, she went deaf later on in life. I can't remember if she got something, scarlet fever or something. I could use a net on naked and afraid. <laughs> oh my God. No, anybody that saw me naked would be afraid. Okay. <laughs> oh, somebody from the far east said it's called Mandala. Oh my God. If yes, naked. I haven't lost enough weight for any to know. I would be scaring everyone. They would be like frightened and afraid. <laughs> running, 
screaming, nightmare, I should have written. No, but the lady told me now, I don't know how true this is, but she told me that, you know, way back when that, you know, the nets, people had different weaving patterns and that was what, how you could, it was almost like their signature. <laughs> I'm making it afraid. Oh, Dawn, that's brilliant. <laughs> mm. They could use some nets on Naked and Afraid. All right, I gotta find some more. I thought I had other paint. I do have painting papers, but they're all the same color. Okay, how many of you guys make a bunch of painting papers and then you just like, oh yeah, and then you have them like, and you, they're all kind of the same color pattern. Oh my God, you guys. Oh my God. Too much. Too funny. Anyway, what else am I going to work on? Okay, so I told you guys, if you guys want to work along with me, I'm going to work on a... I'm still working on our altered book, and it's not too late for anybody that wants to join, and I'm only going to do that on Tuesdays. <clears throat> and right now my Tuesday streams are kind of short because... I have my babe and she has tutoring and it's a whole ridiculousness all onto itself. And so I'm going to do that on Tuesdays and then I want to work on an Oracle deck. And you know, like last year we did <clears throat> the power pack, the inspiration power pack of an empowerment pack that we, where we did the, I don't have any of them around me. We made a deck, we took a deck of cards and made ATCs on them and they had like a background and some other stuff and an empowering woman. You know what? I did tear out some of the pages, Dawn, because they were, I tore it, but not because I was going to make the journal. I tore out some of the pages because there were things I was going to use in my collage. So what happened was I tore out a bunch of pages from this magazine and then I was going to throw it, put it in the recycling and then I said, thought, you know what, I'm going to make a magazine journal. And the reason I chose the Oprah one is because the pages are thin. So that when you add to it, because I knew I was never going to paint directly on it. So when you add to it, you know, it would build up like Marie Claire's thin, Oprah's thin, the paper's thin. Um, I don't know, you guys can pipe in. So I did tear out some. I can't tell you how many because um, I had torn them out to... But they must have had images I wanted. That's why I tore them out. So I can't tell you how many I tore out, but I did. But I have to tell you, this has been really a cathartic, fun sort of thing for me to do. And I decided I would do it because I needed to give her a gift. And see, my kids are so spoiled. They think that I, that all gifts that I give them, like I could give her a monetary, like I could give her money, that she wouldn't even consider that a gift because I didn't make it. Right? That's how spoiled my kids are. Because when they were really little, I used to say that the only gifts that mattered were the ones that were handmade. And we used to all make each other stuff. They still make me stuff. I still make them stuff. But you know, like my one daughter that's traveling, she was like, Mom, please. Because I made everybody a rug this year. She was like, please don't make me a rug. She goes, I don't want to feel guilty that I don't want to carry it around the world with me. And she goes, and she's a minimalist anyway. But I made her one anyway. I just have it here at my house. She doesn't know it. I figure at some point when she gives herself a play, when they settle down from traveling, that she'll she'll like it. So that's why I did it. And I was, quite frankly, I'm cleaning up, doing my calamari, serious calamari. Like, I've, you guys would be so proud of me. I, like, let go so much. <laughs> you break, Emily said she'd break TVs all over if she was naked and afraid. Oh, I love you. Hi, Millie. Oh my god. <laughs> what Jamie, you gotta you gotta jump back on the pity parade, pity parade train? Oh no way, Jamie. No way. That's not no. You need to be here laughing with us. No pity party. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna give you a stern talking to Miss Jamie. Don't go anywhere. <clears throat> the vibration you okay, nothing matches have you ever gone to a party somewhere? And with the same group of friends over and over again, and they give a raffle, and the same damn person wins it. Have you ever have you ever done that? Don't you go anywhere, Jamie. Have you ever done that? And everybody around gets a little pissed off because, like, whoever, Beth always wins the raffle. So why does Beth always win the raffle? 
This is out there. You guys tell me why Beth always wins the raffle. You all have a friend like this, right? Even if you go out to dinner or whatever, like, or she gets bumped up to first class, or you, we all have a friend like that. Why does Beth always win the raffle or gets bumped up to first class? Can anybody tell me? Because she's a cheater? <laughs> no, she's not a cheater. Because <laughs> she knows she will. That's part of it because she expects it and she puts it out there. The bigger thing is it's because she holds the vibration of winning and success. Everything that we have in our lives, and trust me, I get on my own pity party all the time until I catch myself. Because, okay, this is the thing. The pity party you're on now is going to affect your future. So the thoughts you're having right now affect what's going to happen to come. It's almost like we're, um, you know, like setting an alarm clock to wake up next week. And, it, and so the vibrational match may not come to you in a week or two weeks, but it may come and it always seems to come, for me personally, at a time when I don't need it. Hey, Curly. Because she's, right. So I'm telling you right now, the best thing you can do is, have you, did you guys ever read that, those books, like those old books, like Think and Grow Rich, um, the, what's the Norman Vincent Peale one? Uh, oh my gosh. You know, like where you laugh all the time. I can't think of the names of those books, but I know that you guys have seen them. The general premise is that, but what we don't realize is that the vibe, the only thing we are actually in charge of is elevating our energetic vibration. The only thing we're actually in charge of is elevating our vibration. And so what was I having? I was having like a moment the other day. I was just having like a serious moment. I can't even remember what happened now because I don't try to hold on to it. But I was like having my own like moment. And then I just stopped. And I said, oh, no, I'm not drawing this stuff, this chisel to myself next week or tomorrow or next year. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Erase, 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 X, X, X. And then I sat in my car and I focused on my heart and I started just sending love to myself, sending love to myself, sending love to myself, sending love to myself, sending love to myself. And then I started sending love to whatever, the car, the car seat, my, the window, the everything. I started loving everything around me. And then in the next, like, it took me about five minutes, but I started feeling a whole lot better. And then I was like, oh, okay, now I can go. You know, jokes for the John. <laughs> I'm saying, okay, we all have our moments when we, our vibration is low, but we don't want to create that energy. You know, that's why like, that's why they always say like silence is golden and all that so that you not, don't want to recreate it till next week. So here, let's everybody take like a minute and let's all send Jamie love. Like we don't, and you know, the cool thing is that energy, your energy is like silly putty. It goes where you intend it. So Let's all sit here for a minute and send from our hearts, all of our hearts, to Jamie, lots of love. We love you, Jamie. Yes, we all need boundaries, but you know, you don't have to be mean. You just have to set your boundaries and stick with it. And that's hard too for some of us, myself included. We're sending you some love. So tell me how you feel now, Miss Jamie. How do you feel? I'll tell you the epiphany. How I'll tell you how I'll tell you my epiphany about feeling hurt. Okay. And you guys, please pipe in, you know, there's no right or wrong. Your life is your own. It's what you make it right. But I'll tell you my epiphany about being hurt. When you hold on to the feelings of being hurt, no matter who it's by, no matter who it's by, like, 
my kids are the number one. They all they can hurt my feelings, or I can I can be hurt by the things that they say or do faster than anybody. Like anything, you know. Like I might not even take it seriously if if, if somebody else did it, but when my kids do it, it hurts my feelings, right? And Jamie, we love you. Just receive. Just allow you. You should cry. You need to release it. But I'm just going to tell you about the hurt thing that, that came to me. Cry it out, girl. Just cry it out. They've moved on. Like, the hurt is only in me. They moved on. Their actions didn't change. And my kids can be so rude sometimes, you guys. And I didn't raise them that way. But trust me, they are. They're rude. And it, it takes me back and it hurts my feelings. What I realize is the hurt is only in me. So if the hurt's in me, I can do something about it. Right? Just You just have to be as kind and loving as you are, Jamie, because that's who you are. Just need a little few boundaries. We all, we all do it, you know? Yeah, I started putting my foot down with my kids when they were just so rude. I was like, okay, well, this is my house. You guys can move out now. <laughs> you know, I'm like... You want to be rude? Go be rude in your own house. Pay your own bills. You know what I mean? And and you should have seen the looks on my kid, my daughter's face. She was like shocked. I gotta make some painting papers. I need other colors than blue. So I am liking the blue. I need other colors. So all I'm telling you, girl, is the hurt is there and it's in you. Okay. If the hurt wasn't in you, you couldn't feel it, and it wouldn't be. And it wouldn't be. Uh, it wouldn't be there. So all you have to do is. When that hurt comes up, love it. Love the hurt. Love the hurt. The hurt is just, when we feel depressed and when we feel hurt and when we feel lonely, and when it's, you know what it is? It's us forgetting that we are powerful. It's us forgetting that we are the creator of our lives. It is us forgetting our own divinity. It's like, it's like a disconnect from our higher self. Does that make sense? It is a hard pill to swallow, but you know what? When you realize that you are responsible, you are singularly, single-handedly responsible for everything you experience and how you and, and, and how you view your life through your, your lenses, your glasses, it's, just, it's, also, it, it's also very freeing. Why is that? Because if you don't like what you're experiencing, you can change the way you look at it. You can change the way you feel. You actually have more power over that than you can imagine. You know, I'm telling you, I go through it all the time, you guys. I go through it all the time. I, I don't even remember what my, my kids did not too long ago, but it was like so painful to me. And I was so hurt that I caught myself. I was like wallowing in it, painful. I was so mad, blah, 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 blah. you know, and I wanted to like, I wanted to be like, you know, with my, my armor. And I realized, why am I doing that? The only person that's hurting is me. And I just want to feel good. And so I just like, I'm, I said, I'm letting this go. I am letting this go. Letting it go. They can be as ugly to themselves as they want to. I'm telling you, I'm going through it too. You girls are not alone in this. I'm going through it too. There are days I don't want to get out of the bed. You went to the thrift store and you got golden books for it. Ooh, good for you. There are days I don't want to get out of the bed. I'm like, it's called earth school. Right? We keep learning every day. Amen, Barb. There are days when I'm like, oh my God, I cannot do this another day. I don't know what happened the other day, but I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. And they, and, and I'm going to tell you, the, the hard thing is when you have like let people walk on you or you, your boundaries haven't been clear. Like you haven't been clear about what your boundaries are for yourself and you have let people take advantage of you. And you suddenly wake up and you don't want that anymore. I'm going to tell you, you receive resistance from all over the place. Because all those people are like, whoa, wait a second here. Uh, and also that vibrational match that you don't match up with anymore. I'm telling you, you know, that's honestly why people break up. It's because they're not a vibrational match anymore. It's not because anybody, it doesn't even matter what one person did to the other. It's that their vibrations are not a match anymore and your soul knows it. And when your soul knows it, there is nothing you can do. Your soul's like, I'm out of here. You know? You have to be kind to yourself, though. Nobody's perfect. You know? 
hey, Zara, I'm just going through my own chisel. My own, my own chisel. So, Jamie, it killed you in so many ways. So, what you can do is give yourself permission to breathe yourself fully and completely back into your body. Breathe your being soul spirit back into your body and send yourself love. So, I was feeling the most, you guys, I'm an empath. And so, what happens to me being empathic, and I'm sure many of you are too. I think as mothers, we are. Some of us are more aware of it than others, right? And as an empath, I used to pick up like all kinds of energy that wasn't mine and I could pick it up from like sitting on a train whatever just and I was like so one day I don't know I probably already told you guys the story um one day I was so when I lived in New York City I was which is a great school by the way for keeping your energy in check and keeping yourself to yourself because you know you don't need to pick up other people's stuff I came out of the train I, at the time I was a jeweler and I used to live on live on the Upper East Side, and I used to take a train. i got to let these dry in between because these are super thin magazine pages. Um, and I used to take the train to the Diamond District, you know, the place where you could buy stone, the jewelry district in, in the, on the west side in the 40s. And I got out of the train, and there was a woman, there was these women acting out this thing called um, this persecution of these people. And they were, like, actually, like, had, like, a huge banner of like people that had been severely be beaten and these people were holding the banner up as like a political protest and they were like acting out what in front of it like miming the persecution of these people and mostly were women and children for practicing a religion in China called Falun Gong. Now I don't know anything about Falun Gong except this, you know, except for that experience well automatically I, I got sick to my stomach you guys I got sick to my stomach I was like oh my god you know and anything harming anyone I can't do I just can't do it you know um even if it's justified I just I don't do well with it so I was like oh I felt so bad and I was just like sick to my stomach sick to my stomach sick to my stomach and I had to go and, I, and, I, and, and it just burned in my mind. It was like I couldn't even get away from it. The images and then these ladies who are pantomiming it in front. Of, and they're older ladies, you guys. They're not like some young protesters. These are probably ladies that are probably in their mid to late 70s, like protesting for the right to have, hi, Charlotte, to have this, this opportunity, whatever. So I was like, I just said to divinity i said i can't deal with this like i said i don't even know how i'm supposed to deal with this i said i need to go to this meeting and now i feel sick to my stomach and all i can do is have these images of this horrific thing in my head and you know and and i'm up and i'm so upset and i heard very clearly ready for this see the divine in them and send them love i said what and i just heard See the divine in them and send them love. And I said, well, how do I do that? You know, I mean, obviously this conversation is going on in my head. It's like not an out loud conversation. And they said, or this energy said, all you simply need to do is say, I see the divine in you and I send you love. And then I heard very clearly, the only thing that you had to give in this world is love. The only thing that the divine wants from you is love. The only thing anything or anyone needs from you is love. And I thought, okay, and then I thought, this is so silly. And so then I heard, okay, you don't believe me? Like, this has gone on in my head. Okay, th send the sidewalk love. So I said, okay, I see the divine in you and I send you love. And then they said, send the lamp post love. I said, and I saw, I repeated it. I said, the divine in you and I send you love. Okay, now send it to this strange guy standing to your right. So I see the divine in you and send you love. You guys, within, maybe I had to walk two blocks. And within doing that, for the two blocks I walked, sending, sending everything and everyone love, I felt so much better. I felt uplifted. I felt better. I, I could look at things in a different way. 
and I will tell you, people felt it. Like I would walk by a stranger and I would say into my end to myself, I see the divine in you and I send you love and I would send them love and I, they would jump like they would feel like something. So I know that it works. So I'm telling you the first and foremost thing that we have to do for ourselves, what we have to do for ourselves is see the divine in ourselves and send ourselves love. And we're not taught how to self-love. I mean, maybe some of you are, but I know I wasn't as a kid. I wasn't taught, you know. And I came from a very loving family, but I wasn't, like, my parents didn't say, you know, see the divine in yourself and send yourself love. My parents didn't say love yourself, you know. But I'm telling you, so, hi, Liz. So I'm telling you, I have my days where I don't want to get out of bed. I have my days where, you guys, right now, all that stuff going on with all those people at the border with the kids and all that. Can I tell you, I, I, have, to, I have to do my inner process with that every day. It makes me so upset. I cannot watch the news. I cannot watch anything. I have to just be in my space. But I'm telling you. You know, I, all I can do is see the divine in the situation and send it love. See the divine in myself and send myself love. Because if I can hold a candle, a brighter candle of light and a higher vibration for myself first and foremost, then everybody else around me will be okay. All you have to do, and you can fake it, okay? Test it out. Test it out. Test it out. Fake it. Fake it. I'm serious. Test it out. I didn't believe it. I was like, and then you want to know what I heard after that? You want to know what I heard after that? After after all of that and me sending the sidewalk love, the, the telephone pole love, the plants love, the strangers love, the subway car love, the ladies with that persecution sign in front of me love, I heard that is the prayer for peace. I was like so, so stunned. That simple. I honor the divine in myself and I send myself love. I honor the divine in you and I send you love. Jamie, that may be part of your issue, good night's sleep, but it's also like, even when you don't have sleep, you have to be able to put yourself in a place where you feel good. Oh, Barb, make me whatever you're making you. So I'm just telling you. And listen, it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything to say to yourself, test it out. Test it in the best situation. Test it in the worst situation. I see, I see the divine in myself and I send myself love. I honor the divine in me and I send myself love. I honor the divine in you and I send my and send you love. I, saw, I honor the divine in this painting paper and I send, send it love. Yeah, I agree with you. The new, I, I can't watch it, you guys. I had to change my settings on my YouTube, on my, uh, on my, where is she? We'll give her some food and she'll come out. All right, just leave her alone. If she starts barking, though, you better listen and then come get her, okay? Thank you. I mean, we don't know what you're talking about. And if you're coming here to spam us, I don't, we don't know what you're talking about. You know, we don't know. But I'm just telling you for myself, I, I had to change my YouTube channel set and my Facebook channel settings because I couldn't have any more, like, I can't have any more ugliness in my life. There's, like, ugliness has been going on for centuries. And we cannot, we cannot change things you know, who is it that said, somebody, somebody so brilliant said, you cannot 
somebody, somebody so brilliant said that you cannot solve a problem in the energy in which it was created. You know, you cannot solve a problem in, which, in the energy in which it's created. So I refuse to jump in on the bandwagon of being ugly to anyone. Period. I'm not, you know, the, it, and I know that that's not the truth. And I know that that doesn't work. Because if it worked, we would have everything solved already. Everything, right? I was part of this group. I loved this group on Facebook. And people just started getting so ugly and so snarky with each other that, you know what, I took myself out of the group because I no longer enjoyed being in it and I didn't, and I didn't want to do it. And I know that, you know, I can say, you know, I, I totally agree with you, Malia. Malia says, sometimes you need sleep and you need to take a minute for yourself and revisit whatever ails you and address it in a new mindset. Yes. So, you know, so I took myself out of that group. The same with friends. Like, if somebody's, I have a friend that every single time she gets confrontational, like, you could post something that means, like, oh, definitely vote. No spamming vote. Yes, of course vote. I vote. We all vote. We're, we're, we're not, we're not, but we don't have to, we don't have to have the, the rhetoric thrown down our throats. Of course I vote. We all vote here. Totally vote. Yes, voting. No, there's no turning away. No, 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 no turning away. Absolutely voting. But, you know, it's like, so I, I took the friend away. Jamie, I'll put you in my woo girl. You'll be in my woo-woo, and I will put you in it, and I love you, and we love you. We all love you, and we're here for you. We are here for you. I'm just painting some backgrounds, and then I'm going to add color to it. I just I had too many blue pages. I needed some other color. No, but I just, I know that I can't, I cannot fix the world, but I can fix me. I can work on me. I can be a better me. I can love myself so that whenever I'm around other people, that whatever I'm carrying as an energy and a vibration will lift someone up. Hi, Kennedy. Your internet's knocked out. Yes, I agree with you, Amy. It is it it it, it is very it is very sickening. But I can tell you this: arguing with it isn't going to change it. But I can tell you right here, right now. Seeing the issue and loving the issue, just loving it, just sending it the vibration of love will, will lift it up enough to shift. I've seen it. So I have this friend. She called me the other day. I don't talk to her all the time. And she usually only calls me like, <laughs> she, calls, she calls me like when something is really serious, like she needs help with something, you know, like it's serious. So she calls me or, or, to share, or she calls me to share good things too. But I'm just saying, like, so I knew something was up because she called me, like, 7.45 in the morning, which is early for her, but usually I'm up and doing things. She called me to tell me that this friend of ours was in intensive care and had been diagnosed with some illness, and they didn't think that it was going to be, that it was going to be very long for him. And she, and she was just like, I, ha I just need to talk to you because, you know, like sometimes you can't really share that with everyone else because, you know, you don't want to get into the whole dip, the whole downer of it all, but you want to, you know, talk to somebody who can hear what you have to say and, you know, honor it and whatever. So we were talking and I was doing my inner process, which I always do. Like my inner process is whatever it is in me that's reflecting this. I definitely want to make amends. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Whatever it is in me that's experiencing this, I need. To, I I really want to let go and make amends. I love you. I love you. I love you. So she called me and said, you know, that she'd gotten this call from one of his kids saying that he was asking for her and um, that I guess he'd been in the hospital for I don't know a while I don't know exactly and 
So when she went to see him, he was hooked up to all this stuff. And the nurse, she was asking the nurse, like, anyway, he was hooked up to all these things. And she said he, you know, he, he had tubes and everything, so he couldn't, he didn't really talk to her, but she, he knew that she was there. And, and his kids, I don't know, she found, she was there for a good long time, and she finally just said, I'm going to tell the kids if they wanted to go home that she could stay the night, but that she lived too far to, to keep coming back and forth. She lived hours away from where they were. But she lived too far to come back and forth, right? So, after the kids all went home or went to take a shower or do whatever, good night, Jamie. We love you so much. And we will be sending you the best woo-woo we can possibly send you. So, after the kids left, she asked the nur nurses, she was like, well, what is this, you know? And they said, that's his heartbeat. And his heart was like beating like 130 beats a minute. That's a lot, you guys. And the nurse was like, and my friend was like, well, and she said, and it's been like that for the past three days. And then my friend's like, okay. So she's looking up the number and she sees it. And then she asks about the blood pressure, which was like some crazy, ridiculous thing. And then she asks about, um, the heart rate, the blood pressure, and the breathing. And the breaths per minute were like not normal either. And she said, it's almost like, she said, we can't give him anything else. She said, it's like he's, you know, he wasn't resting. And she said he should, with all the sedation they had given him, he should have been like out, but he wasn't. So my friend sat there in her helplessness, right? When you see one of your dear friends going through this, and she just looked at those numbers and she just said, she said, Shelly, you know what? I just started loving those numbers up. I just started looking at those numbers and saying, I love you. I know you're here for a reason. I love you. And she said, and I just started loving it up, loving it up, loving it up, loving it up. She goes, because that's all I could do. She goes, because otherwise, if I'd really thought about it, I'd fall apart. You know, I'd just fall apart. If I'd really just allow myself to dig myself into that hole. And, you know, she said, she said, I was kind of hoping I could rest. She said, because I had taken such a long drive. And she said, I had to work the next day. And it was like, I don't know, three hours or something from where she lives. So she said, you know, I just sat in the chair. And she said, and I held his hand. And I just kept just loving all those numbers. Loving him, loving the numbers, loving the hospital, loving myself. You know, just kept loving it. You know, and her, you know, her prayer of reflection was just sending herself love, sending the, the numbers love, sending whatever the situation, because who knows what it is, right? And then she said she fell asleep. And she woke up because the nurse came in. And she said it was about daybreak. And the nurse came in and said, I just wanted to see what you were doing. Now, my friend's asleep because she's put herself in this meditative state of just loving him, loving the numbers, loving. You know, she honestly thought he was going to transition. So she just wanted to be sending him if he was going to transition in the best possible energy, right? She's not a nurse. I'm not a nurse, you know. And the woman walks in and goes, I just wanted to know what you were doing. And my friend said, nothing. I'm just sitting here, I'm sitting here. She says, why? She says, because she says, look at his numbers. You guys, they were all normal. From three days, they were all like normal. And and and, and my friend just said, oh, that's so good. So all I know is that it works. And it, it, you know, she's not magic. I'm not magic. You know, from 12 hours before when they told her they can't give him any more medication. They can't give him anything else. You know, here she thought she was like loving him into a transition, right? And then later on he woke up. 
because he wasn't, he wasn't, um, I don't think he'd spoken. He hadn't eaten in three days. He hadn't, anyway, this was just a couple days ago. So all I can tell you is that it's not hard. We make it harder than it is. And I don't know how long he has, and I don't know. I mean, I talked with her today, and she said he was eating and, you know, like, whatever, you know, seemed fairly, seemed better, right? Um, but I know it works. I mean, it's not just singular to anybody else. You have wet, what did, what, I missed what you said. So I'm just saying that, you know, like, you don't know why you're there. You don't know what you're going through, what it, what for, but keep loving yourself through it. Because I said to her, well, what did you do? She said, I just kept telling him I loved him. She goes, not out loud. She goes, internally. Yep. So I know it works. I mean, I've had my own experiences with weird stuff like that. Girls, you all have, we all need a break. We all need a break. We all need a break. We love you, Jamie. We totally love you. And I know things are going to get better. Love you too, Malia. I'm sorry you were having such a rough time. You guys, it's not just you guys, it's everybody. It's it's like the collective energy. So if we all add to each other's collective, you know, even if we don't want to, even if we don't want to, okay? Even if we don't want to. So if you guys want to make an Oracle deck with me, you just need some cards. And you can make yours as many cards or as few cards as you'd like. You could have... 52 cards if you feel adventurous you could have 10 cards but I think after I finish my magazine journal I'm going to start on the oracle deck and so what we'll do is we'll we need some backgrounds and you definitely have to send yourself I love you Dawn you guys go on over to Dawn's channel it's let's let's make a mess today and check out her channel you will learn and love and have so much fun she is so fun and then she also has a Facebook group so if you go to her channel you could you can also click on and join her Facebook group and they do do fun swaps I also have a Facebook group but we don't do swaps saying that we will do one soon we're gonna do a one stamp envelope swap soon of ATC fodder um, and because we were supposed to do it at Christmas but you guys know I was sick so I couldn't do it I was guys that that was a trying experience for me but go on over and support Dawn and check out her channel. You'll love it. You'll love hanging out with her. She's hilarious. You need to make an Oracle deck. Well, I'm making one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've, I've already written out like some positive um, sayings and stuff for the Oracle deck. And what I'll do is when we start to make it, or maybe the week before we start to make it, I'll make a video saying these are the supplies you need. And I'll put the, the, now you can have any words you want. Love you, Dawn. Love, love, love you. Um, so we'll put out, I'll put the, the sayings in a PDF link to the video so you can just print it out. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And also making a journaling prompt deck. So, but it, these will be for you. Now, listen, I, I also want to tell you that if you wanted to make one of these decks for like, say you have somebody in your life that you love and you just want to send them positive affirmations and just, you know, you can make one of these decks like an art deck and make them while, you know, make them now as a gift for something at a later time. Does that make sense? So... Because I'm just making some painting paper so that I can have some more backgrounds that are not just blue. That's all. Because I guess all I have is blue around here. You know, an oracle deck is kind of like a, 
you could look at it like a fortune telling deck, or I look at it as like a positive affirmation deck. It's like, you know, where you pull a de you pull a card, and maybe maybe the card would say, you know, take time for the little things, and you know, give you some inspiration for the day. That's what it is for me, Patricia. But you could look at it in any way you want. So if you guys want to join along, you can make yourself. Um, I would suggest that you do at least 30 cards so that you could do one card a day, you know? You know, you could pull one card a day or 31 cards, you know? I would suggest you do that at least. Um, but it's up to you. There's no rules. You guys know me. Trashy art. There's no rules in trashy art. And I'm still making my still making my um, altered book. If you guys want to join on Tuesdays for that, it's still not too late. You could join and make your altered book. Yeah, but I mean, you could collect your own positive sayings. They don't have to be, I'm just telling you that I will have some because I've already collected them. But if you wanted to collect your own, you can. Yeah, well, I'm, see, I decided I was going to make them. We love you, Dawn. I decided I was going to make them because I need to, I want to make one for myself, but I also want to make one. I have lots of friends that I give, um, you know, little gifts to, you know, little handmade gifts, little things to. But I was thinking I have a friend who's having her 50th birthday soon, and my... Um, you know, my motivation was so I could make her one for her 50th birthday. But, you you know, you do it for whatever you want to do. It's not, there's no rules. You guys, I have got to get my stuff organized in one space. I'm so frustrated with myself because, remember I had all that company? Well, I moved my stuff when I had all that company. Which is kind of frustrating. I moved my stuff when I had all that company, I put some of it in storage, and I don't have all my stuff. And it's like, I was looking for, I have an enormous folder of stencils, like like a binder that has all my stencils in it. Some I've made, some I have. Guys, I search high and low. I have a feeling it is in, it is in my, um, I have a feeling it is in my storage because that's how I roll. Because I'm ridiculous. Because that's how I roll. Some of them I've made. Some of them I bought. Oh, you know who's having a sale? I'm not trying to enable anyone, but if you're a stenciler, like if you like stencils like me, um, Stencil Girl is having a sale. I think it's for the next couple of days. Oh, that's awesome, Joyce. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. We'll just gather your cards. We'll probably won't do it for a few more weeks, but, you know, we'll definitely do it. And I'll, I'll try to make a video before I, before we start so that everybody's on the same page. You know what I mean? And, and listen, you know, you can use your own funny home anecdotes. You don't have to use mine. Your kids are going to be bombarded with all the things you made them. Guys, I've made my kids so many things. It's ridiculous. I don't even know if my kids even... I don't know. I think my kids think that's what moms do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I think my kids are like... They're like, I think all parents do this. I remember when my oldest daughter, she's in, she's 27 now, but when she was little, I remember her coming home from her friend's house laughing hysterically that um, she thought it was so funny that 
her friend's parents went out and bought Christmas gifts. She just thought it was so funny. She just could not understand, like, why, why they would do that. Because I told you guys, we always made our gifts. I mean, okay, Santa brought some gifts that were, like, not bad. And, you know, of course, my mother bought gifts and stuff like that. But she thought it was hilarious. It's like, she went to her friend's house and she said, they buy all their gifts. She thought it was so funny. She thought, how ridiculous is that? I tried to explain to her, maybe it's because none of them really like to, I mean, I've made stained glass windows. I've made hats and pajamas and purses, obviously journals. What else have I made? I've made all kinds of jewelry. Um, what else? One year I made my daughter that's in her 20s, I made her a Christmas tree skirt. I made it this beautiful, she was really into penguins. And I made her ones with the penguins as if like the, one of the penguins was Santa, the penguin was the nativity, all the penguins were the nativity scene. The penguins were um, ice skating. I made all kinds of stuff. I made her that, what else did I make her? Made, I've made so many things for my kids. I don't even know if they if they even know what I've made them. Yes, Joni, that's awesome. Put Bible verses on your deck. That's excellent. Excellent, excellent. It is lots of work, Joyce. I've crocheted them blankets. I've made them quilts. Um, I don't know. I've made them all kinds of stuff. They probably all think it's ridiculous anyway. They don't say anything, but maybe behind the scenes they're like, oh my God, not another ridiculous present. I will tell you one year I didn't, one year not too long ago, I was like, I just didn't have it. I was working so much, I just didn't have it in me to make gifts. And my daughter goes, what do you mean you're not going to make gifts? What do you mean? What do you mean there's not how to make gifts? I was like, well, when you were doing your college exams, you didn't make, you know what I mean? I said, you were off the hook. She goes, yeah, but I'm not the mom. I was like, oh my God. So I don't remember what I made them that year. I've made them all kinds of ridiculousness. One year I made, I know one year I made reusable shopping bags. You know? Sweet dreams, Millie. We love you. Good night, Mama. What book are you hooked on? You've made clothes, stuffed animals, and cardboard houses. Okay, I've done the clothes and the stuffed animals. I have not done cardboard houses. I have done gingerbread houses, though. Does that count? Don't you love it when you have a book that you're, like, totally into, that you're, like, totally, like, stuck on? You're, like, that is, like, that is my jam. i got to find my other stamps. I don't have enough contrasting. This is what I get. This is all my fault. This is what I get because I don't have my stuff in order. And this is what it is. All my stuff is half there and half here. Quite frankly, lately, you guys, I have been looking in. You're going to laugh. This is like it's the ridiculousness of my life. I'm looking at composting toilets. Are oh, you reading the Outlander series? That will definitely keep you up. That's definitely that, that that's definitely going to keep you up there, Malia. <laughs> Good for you. I haven't read a book in a long time that I, that's made me like stay up to read it. And I didn't read the Outlander series, but I have seen part of the television series, and I can understand why. I can totally understand why. I'm sure the book is way better. All right, so for those of you, oh, so that's what I've been doing. I've been, I've been obsessed with composting toilets, you guys, because ugh, it's a whole nother ridiculousness. We have been, I told you guys we've been trying to buy a house or find a house. Well, I found a piece of property that I really like, but the problem is, is 
it is an off the grid thing. So I said to my hottie, before we make a commitment to it, I want to know, I want to know how much all of this, before I say, okay, and we buy this property, and then I realize that, you know what I'm saying? Because it has to have a water, this property has no sewer and no, um, everything, it has no water. It's going to have to be a catchment. It's like a whole thing. So that's been my focus. My focus has been on, as ridiculous as it sounds, my focus has been on composting toilets. Don't watch the show. If you've read the book, I think the book's always better. If you've watched the, if you do the book, I think it's better. Anyway, so that's what I've been focused on. I've been focused on composting toilets, as ridiculous as that is. Right? Composting toilets. So silly. I never knew there was so much to learn about composting toilets. But there really is, because there's different types of composting. Composting with water and composting without water. And good night, Denise. Well, you have a good night. So the, for those of you that want to stay for the meditation, if you want some energized water, go grab your water. We're going to do the meditation in a couple minutes, and it lasts about 10 minutes. And for those of you that aren't going to do water, which it's not necessary, but some people like to do it, um, just bring it. You can always include anyone you'd like to in this work, knowing full well that it's up to them whether they receive whether they receive the energy or not because we all have conscious consent, you know, and so it is up to each one of us to, um, you love the modern conveniences? Yeah, but Patricia, it's not even the modern conveniences. It's like, I want to, it's a whole ridiculousness. It's, it, as I get closer to it, I'll, I'll tell you more about it. But I'm just telling you, that's what I've been learning about. I just want to see if I can, if we can even do it. If we can't do it, then I, then we're not doing it. You know what I mean? But a lot of people live off the grid here because just some parts of the island you can't get anything to. I like modern experiences too, but. It's not even that. It's, um, so what, let me know if anybody's going to get their water because I'll, I'll wait a couple minutes before we start and then we'll start. Realize none of these pages are going to be used just like this or usually torn up. You'd be surprised how You'd be surprised how cool the composting toilets are. They've come a long way. <laughs> anyway, so who's in for the woo-woo? Let me know. Say me. Let me know who's in for the woo-woo. And bring to mind anybody that you'd like to bring to mind that that, would, that you feel could use that energy work. And it can you could also bring a situation. So say you're having like some sort of a a terrible situation like with your neighbor or with. <laughs> okay, cool. Say you're having a terrible situation with your neighbor. You know that I don't know they let their cat poop in your yard or whatever it is that drives you crazy. You know you can bring that situation to mind too, because. Those situations also have hold energy too. Okay, cool. Perfect, perfect. So before we start, if you got your water, great. And if you don't have water, that's okay. The reason people like to have water or whatever beverage they have is that the water, your water holds energy. And test it out. Hold a glass of water and send it so much love and then water one of your plants that isn't doing well. And watch it suddenly grow. It's it's crazy. It works like that. 
So the water holds the energy that comes through, and so you can drink it all week long, and it just raises your vibration up to the place where you were when you were here. That's kind of how it works. All right, so let's get started. All you need to do to participate is breathe. Inhale through your nose and exhale out through your mouth. Now, if you find yourself in a space and you're not breathing that way, that's okay, too. There's no right or wrong. You cannot get it wrong. You cannot. It doesn't work like that. Bring to mind the people that you'd like to include. If there's some people that you'd like to include in your energy work, go ahead and bring them to mind right now. And you only have to think about them once. Know that it is up to them whether they receive it. You know, you can send somebody. They receive only good vibrations and good love and things like that from you. But say you have a daughter that is or a son that is, you know, having their own issues or going through it, you can't manipulate their energy. You can send them love. You can send them good wishes. But if they, if it's their, if they want to hold on to that life lesson to learn, it's up to them. Okay, bring to mind any situation. Maybe some of you, I don't know, who knows, like want a new job, want a more, lo want a loving partner, want a better house. Um, want more peace want to see things change in our lives and in our world bring that to mind and then bring anyone else to mind you can bring your pets your spouse <clears throat> your children anyone to mind that you'd like to include bring your friends Bring your pets, definitely. Always include your home. It's really important that <clears throat> your home and the land that you live on feel that same peace and love. Ready? So inhale through your nose and exhale out through your mouth. Receive and release. Receive and release. Imagine yourself in a column of light. When you look up, you can't see the end. And when you look down, you can't see the end. This is your column of light. It is unique to your being, soul, spirit. Allow your column of light to surround your body six feet in all directions. Give your column of light the suggestion, part of the earth. And with that, your column of light is right there, deep in the heart of the earth. Give your column of light big tree roots like oak roots. Allow your column of light and your roots to grow far, deep and wide in the heart of the earth. On every inhale and every exhale, allow your roots to go deeper and deeper. Let's ask the earth to bless us with her energy. I see this energy like beautiful golden light, but you can see it, feel it, think it, or just know it any way that works for you. Feel this beautiful golden light energy pouring through your roots, pouring through all the layers of the earth, and up through the floor, 
through your column of light, filling your feet and ankles, calves and knees, thighs and hips. Feel it filling the base of your spine, your lower abdomen, your waist, your chest and back, your throat and neck, your shoulders, your arms, your wrists, your hands, and out every finger. Feel it filling your neck and throat, your face and head, and feel it fountaining out the top of your head as high as you can imagine. Ready? Breathe it in. Breathe it in. And breathe it in. Take a moment to enjoy your connection to the earth. I'd like you to give your column of light the direction, heart of the divine, heart of creator creation energy, heart of the central sun. And with that, your energy is right there in this beautiful cosmic angelic realm. Give your column of light the same roots you did below your feet above your head in this beautiful cosmic realm. With every inhale and every exhale, allow your roots to go deeper and deeper, deeper in the heart of the earth, and deeper in the heart of creation, the heart of divinity, the heart of the central sun. Now give your, your body personality and column of light permission to receive the energy that this beautiful cosmic angelic realm would like to share with you. I see this energy like beautiful diamonds, like silvery diamond light, but you can see it, feel it, think it, or just know it any way that works for you. Feel this beautiful diamond light energy pouring through your column of light. Feel it mixing with your energy and the Earth's energy and spreading six feet in all directions. Feel it filling your head and face, your throat and neck, your shoulders, your arms, your wrists, your hands, and out every finger. Feel it filling your chest and back, and your waist, your lower abdomen, the base of your spine, and feel it pouring through your hips, thighs, knees, calves, and ankles expelling any and all excess out through your roots deep in the heart of the earth. Ready? Breathe it in. Breathe it in. And breathe it in. Take a moment to enjoy your connection to heaven and earth. Now I'd like you to focus on your heart. And I'd like you to give your heart a window. And then allow any energetic patterns from any part of your body personality that no longer serve you to leave. And what this means is like, cleaning out your closet. Like you've lost a lot of weight and you don't need to keep those clothes anymore. So you're going to let them go and you don't even need to know what these energetic patterns or energetic connections are. Just ask your being soul spirit to allow yourself to release any and all patterns, any and all energies, and any and all connections and cords to people, places, things, times, and events that no longer serve you. So every time you exhale, you're going to release those energy. And on the inhale, you're receiving yourself 
all of you that you've allowed to leave for whatever reason, you're receiving it back into your body now. Ready? Receive yourself back in and let go of anything else. Receive yourself back in and let go of anything else. Breathe yourself back in and let go of anything else. Let's add two more points of light, keeping the window in your heart open to release anything in any part of your body that no longer serves you. Let's add your lower abdomen and your throat. Breathe yourself fully and completely. Call yourself back in. See yourself returning to your body personality, little pieces and parts of you, like beautiful shimmery diamonds, returning back to your being soul spirit. Breathe yourself fully and completely back into yourself now and let go of anything else. And breathe yourself back in and let go of anything else. One more time, breathe yourself back in and let go of anything else. Let's add two more points of light to this. Let's add your lower abdomen and the center of your forehead. So we're working on the center of your forehead, your throat, your heart, your waist, and your lower abdomen. Ready? Breathe yourself fully and completely back into your body personality now. Ready? Breathe yourself back in and let go of anything else. Receive yourself fully and completely and release. Receive and release. Receive and release. Receive and release. One more time, receive and release. Add two more points of light that's at the base of your spine and the top of your head. Focusing on the top of your head, the center of your forehead, your throat, your heart, your waist, your lower abdomen, and the base of your spine. Ready? Breathe yourself fully and completely back into your body personality now. Ready? Breathe yourself back in. Breathe yourself back in. And breathe yourself back in. Let's add two more points of light one foot below your feet and one foot above your head and all those in between. Breathe yourself fully and completely back into your body personality now. Ready? Breathe yourself back in. And 
and breathe yourself back in. And breathe yourself back in. And one more time, breathe yourself back in. Add two more points of light, six feet below your feet and six foot above your head, and all those in between. Give your body personality, your being, soul, spirit permission to recall all of your energy through all time, space, and dimension, all kingdoms and planes. Breathe yourself fully and completely back into your body personality now. Ready? Breathe yourself back in. And breathe yourself back in. And breathe yourself back in. Let's add two more points of light. The point where you meet in the heart of the earth and the point where you meet in the heart of creation, creator energy, the heart of the central sun. Breathe yourself fully and completely back into your body personality now, into every cell from all time, space, and dimension, all kingdoms and planes. And on the exhale, keep that window in your heart open, release any energy Cords, people, places, things, times, and events that no longer serve you now. Ready? Breathe yourself fully and completely back in. And breathe yourself back in. And breathe yourself back in. One more time, breathe yourself fully and completely back into your body. And every cell, breathe yourself back in. I want you to focus on your hands and tell me when you feel this energy. Tell me when you feel it.
want you to take your hands and I want you to focus them to a point on the earth. Always include right where you live or an element or all of them. Maybe you choose water, air, ethers, fire. Maybe you choose the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom. Maybe you choose the human race. Now, and you can always pick somebody who needs your help as well. Those will be all the people that you thought of at the beginning. Okay. On the inhale, receive. And on the exhale, I want you to see yourself sending this energy to all of those. Ready? Receive. And give. Receive and give. Receive and give. Receive and give. hands on your heart. Receive and give to yourself. like you to imagine an infinity symbol. See it starting at the heart, in the heart of creator creation energy above your head in the heart of the central sun crossing through your heart, entering deep into the heart of the earth and crossing back where it began. On the inhale, receive love from the heart of the divine, the heart of creation, the heart of the earth, and the heart of the central sun. And on the exhale, give back love to the divine, the heart of the earth, the heart of creator creation, the heart of the central sun. Ready? Receive and give. Receive and give. Receive and give. Receive and give. And when you feel ready, open your eyes and come back. And feel free to share anything if you'd like. And you may not have anything to share, and that's fine, too. Hey, Patricia. Oh, gosh, Barter, so welcome. Thank you. Thanks for being my peeps. You know, some people experience things differently, so there's no right or wrong. However you experience it is what's right for you. You know? And if you want to share, share. And if you don't, that's okay, too. (laughs) 
I hear interrupted by the peanut gallery. Oh, I get it. I totally get it. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so glad you guys hung out with me. You guys, this energy stays really present here all the time. So if you didn't, like, say, like, you know, what Lynn's sharing is that her family was interrupting her, you can come back. It stays, it's there the whole time. And pretty much, and it's that way on any of the streams that you listen to. It's there. And the energy's there. And you can go back and listen again and again. And I hope you do. I mean, I hope you, I hope you, um, I hope you take advantage of it and go back and listen. Oh, you feel peaceful. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so, so glad. I am so glad. Well, I don't know what I'm doing this weekend. I haven't made any plans. Friday came upon me faster than I was ready. How many of you guys experienced that? We were just like, oh my gosh, Friday already? Um, so Friday came upon me before I was ready, so I don't know what my plans are. Occasionally I get a wild hair and stream on another day, but I don't know. It just depends upon, like, what I'm feeling like. And also depends upon all the things in my peanut gallery as well. Because <laughs> I have a peanut gallery too. And I know somebody's going to say, like, so what are you breathing back in? And I'll just share that with you. Just, I, I probably have shared it many times, but what you're breathing back in is you. So, like, sometimes, for whatever reason, and we don't even need to know why, we don't need to go back and rehash it out or relive it of the why, but sometimes we, just pieces of us leave. Oh, I love you, Liz. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for your love and support. I, I'm always thinking about you. I'm meaning to call you, but... I haven't really had any private time, if you know what I mean. But I will soon, I promise. Anyway, so, like, sometimes, like, some of us have experienced it if you've had lots of surgery. Anesthesia can cause that. Or if you were really sick as a child, sometimes you can have that. Um, if you've been in an accident or been frightened or... And, you know, you can usually tell it sometimes when you go, I don't really feel like myself. You know, I'm not feeling completely like myself. Well, that's generally it. So sometimes it can happen if you, you know, have taken too many recreational drugs or had too much to drink too frequently or not even too frequently. It can happen, you know, even a few times. So what happens is, is that pieces of us just leave, you know, it's like sort of like we leave the party. And you can tell when you're not all there because you like feel like spaced out or, um, you know, that sort of thing. So what you're doing is you're just giving your body personality permission. You're basically saying, look, I know that, that this is happening and I'm just going to allow, I'm going to call you back in. And you feel more like yourself, you know. You know, I'm just going to, it's like having all the game pieces back in the game. <laughs> Does that make sense? Having all the game pieces back in the game? I'm not going to glue this down and decide what I'm put on the other side. Maybe this will overlap it. Well, I love you gals. Come back and listen to this energy work anytime. And the other thing is, is that you can invite other people to listen to it too. You know, and I challenge each and every one of you to test the prayer of peace by sending, by seeing the divine in everything and sending it love. Everything. Your pets, your broom, your car, you know, and see, things respond. They really do. Well, I love you girls and gentlemen, if there's any gentlemen here too. And um, I hope I'll see you again soon. And if not, I'll definitely see you on Tuesday because I'll definitely be streaming on Tuesday. And as always, from my heart to your heart, I'm sending you so much aloha. Until next time.